Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I rise today to present SB 1255 on behalf of Senator Morlock. Current law requires couples that are separating in anticipation for divorce proceedings to demonstrate that they are, quote, living separate and apart, end quote, in order to establish a date of separation. A recent court ruling determined this to mean that the couple must have separate residence in order to establish the date of separation. This ruling takes away a couple's freedom to decide what arrangements works best for their circumstances, whether it is to save money going into the divorce proceedings or to maintain stability in co-parenting children. A divorcing couple should have the flexibility and control over their situation as they go through this difficult ordeal. Uh, SB 1255 defines date of separation as a date that a complete and final breakup in the marital relationship has occurred and directs the court to take into account all relevant evidence in determining that date of separation. Living under the same roof would no longer be a barrier to establishing date of separation, but merely a factor to consider in the court's analysis. AB 1255 is supported by the Family Law Section of the California State Bar and has received bipartisan support. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Wilk. Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Regrettably, I've got to rise in opposition to what I think is a uh, well-intended but ultimately potentially disastrous bill. Um, I neglected the opportunity, passed on the opportunity to carry this bill when the lawyers brought it to me, and uh, it's my understanding that, uh, that all of the other lawyers on the floor in this chamber were uh, passed on carrying this bill for a couple of reasons. Um, what it does is provide our courts with more work. What it does is provide our lawyers with more opportunity to bill uh, divorcing uh, uh, clients at some of the more you know, difficult times of their lives. And in addition to overburdening our courts and to uh, being a full employment act for lawyers, what it does is it takes a very clear, bright line that the courts have said is the right thing in these divorce circumstances for us to have and thoroughly muddies it up. Where it gets dangerous, not just that it's expensive and not just that our courts are already overburdened, but where it gets dangerous is that now we are not only allowing, but we are encouraging couples and we're told, for whatever reason, by the, the floor manager, whatever reason they want to continue living together, they can continue living together. Well, one of the reasons that mind-bogglingly was given to us in the Judiciary Committee hearing as a reason to live together is because it's too expensive to have separate residences and you know maybe the parents want to be able to continue dating so they can just bring the new date home to the same house now some of us scratched our heads at that as a reason for supporting this bill but honestly that's what was said in the Judiciary Committee but even worse you've got divorcing parents living under the same roof this body rightly is concerned about domestic violence why in the world would we encourage divorcing couples when the courts have said we want a clear bright line encourage divorcing couples to live together under the same roof you're not going to want one of your constituents after having supported this bill come back to you and say that piece of legislation is the reason I'm a battered wife and that is the potential the courts have said clear, bright line. This legislature should pride itself on writing laws that are clear, easily enforceable, bright lines. Why in the world, when more than one court, there are two of them out there that have asked for this bright line, why in the world would we go muddle it up, muddy it up, and leave our constituents open at a time when they're most vulnerable? to having to pay more for lawyers, to worry about domestic violence, and to do all the other things that right now, with the status quo, we get to avoid. Vote no on this bill. It isn't right. The courts are telling us not to do it. And um, I'm thinking your constituents are going to be asking you not to do this when they find out how we're muddying the waters and potentially putting them at risk. I urge a no vote. Mr. Bloom, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll, I'll be brief on, on, on this issue. 
Um, I'm, I'm probably the one on the floor who has the most experience in this actual field, having practiced family law for nearly 30 years in, in my career. The issue of data separation is almost always a factual issue. This idea of uh, a bright line distinction is not one that should apply here. I can tell you from my personal experience that there are many times that I would have liked to advise my client to be able to stay in the house and not have to incur the expense of, move, of moving somewhere else. There are lots of circumstances where it is in your client's best interest to stay right where he or she is. And there are many circumstances when that is not the best advice. But there ought to be flexibility so that parties have the ability to make reasonable decisions. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. All discussion having ceased on the item, Mr. Wilk, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank all my colleagues for the ro uh, robust discussion. Again, I just want to reiterate under the current court ruling, one spouse is forced to find and pay for alternative housing in order to establish a date of separation at a time when families may be trying to closely monitor their spending. Often they cannot afford to move to a separate residence until after the divorce is finalized. SB 1255 simply allows the courts to look at all factors when determining the date of separation and allows the expression of intent to end the marriage in corresponding consistent conduct to constitute a complete and final break. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Wilk. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. Ayes 57, noes 4. The measure passes.